Usually in my search for potential topics to cover in a video, I often run through a lot of dinosaur video games. And when I see something interesting within these games, I try to dig more into it to see if there's anything worth talking about. But 9 times out of 10, there aren't. See, when it comes to dinosaur video games, it's usually hard to find topics that either haven't been talked about to death or are actually interesting enough to make a video out of. But to my surprise, I was actually able to find something that really piqued my interest. A dinosaur game that was never released to the US and remained exclusive to Japan, the region it was originally released in. This game was known as Dinosaur Hunting, and it was released exclusively on the original Xbox. And despite the lackluster title that just sounds like a modern dinosaur simulator app you download on your phone, there there was actually a lot going on in this game. But before we get into that, here's a little context. This game was released by Scarab. Just Scarab, I guess, a company that I couldn't really find much on. In fact, in my search for this company, I only found a few instances of Scarab game developers, with one being headquartered in Japan, but doesn't have Dinosaur Hunting listed as one of their developed games, and doesn't even have a selection of original Xbox games. And another Scarab company that I found apparently made this game that I'm not even going to try to pronounce because I know I'm going to get it wrong, even though Dinosaur Hunting is also not listed as one of their developed games either. And just out of curiosity, I searched for this game right here and found out it was actually developed by a company called Weststone, and coincidentally wasn't released outside of Japan either. Just when I thought I would never get an answer as to what the true Scarab developer was, I ran into a Metacritic page on this game, and they had a link to the Scarab developer. And upon clicking this link, it leads you to an empty page with no information about this game developer aside from one single title they've made, Dinosaur Hunting, which I guess is somewhat of a confirmation that this was the only game they ever developed, but I'm not entirely sure how true that is. At this point, I'm pretty fucking confused with this, so just correct me in the comments down below if you know the actual Scarab company behind the creation of this game. Anyways, it was also published by Metro 3D, an American video game developer and publisher. Apparently, there had been plans to release this game in America as it was announced by Metro 3D that they were getting the game for distribution outside of Japan, and this game was apparently scheduled for release on November 7th of 2003. But the US release had been delayed not once, not twice, but three times before eventually being cancelled altogether. Moving on to what the game's actually about, it takes place in 1910 and revolves around a group of characters that have to go into the deep Amazon jungles to track and capture dinosaurs to save them from an active volcano. As simple as this game sounds, according to a blog post on the Giant Bomb website, you're supposed to methodically scour the environment to look for specific clues of the dinosaurs you're hunting. These usually come in the form of broken trees, dead bodies, footprints, and massive piles of shit. And in the process, the game may throw some curveballs at you like having raptors jump out at you from the dense foliage. It's a different kind of hunting experience, not only in terms of setting and tracking, but also because instead of killing the dinosaurs, you're actually tasked to shoot them with tranquilizers. Among the arsenal you're given includes a pistol, a rifle, and a shotgun, all loaded with tranquilizers because apparently, according to the synopsis of this game, you're going out of your way to quote unquote hunt down the dinosaurs and transfer them back home for the amusement of the masses. So essentially, you're hunting for sport, but not really since you aren't killing anything. But that doesn't seem to affect the overall challenge of the game, as it doesn't seem like the tranquilizers wear off on the dinosaurs that you shoot. So it's almost as if they might as well be dead, since it doesn't really detract that much from the hunting aspect of the game. But of course, this is just from an outside perspective. I've never played the game, so I can't tell for sure. And speaking of dinosaurs, one thing that really intrigued me about this game was not only the amount of dinosaurs and prehistoric animals it has, but the variety of them as well. This game isn't just filled with popular dinosaurs or just theropod dinosaurs. There's also dinosaurs like Anatotitan, Shunosaurus, Therizinosaurus, Pelican Mimus, and so on. The dinosaurs themselves look fairly unique. According to this blog post, it states, The developers wanted to put their own creative spin on the debate over what dinosaurs looked like, and it shows. And this is followed by an example of how they decided to convey that creative spin by creating three different classes of raptors, all covered with feathers. A feature that feels uncommonly seen in pop culture when it comes to dinosaurs. And it seems that some of these dinosaurs also have unique abilities. For example, the Ankylosaurus in the game are able to roll into a ball and charge at you as a way of defending themselves. 
Pretty strange, but I appreciate the attempt and change with the dinosaurs and their features to better differentiate them from the rest. Overall, just from taking a look at the dinosaurs themselves through playthroughs I was able to find on YouTube, I can honestly say they don't look all that bad. They have nice color variation, they're easily distinguishable from one another, there's a healthy variety of them. Unfortunately, I can't find much on the developers themselves in regards to their ideas and or inspirations behind the dinosaurs they decided to put into their game. All of the information I was able to compile thus far was from blogs, short synopsis, playthroughs, and reviews of the game online. Hey guys, it's present Diego here to tell you that past Diego is a massive fucking idiot. Whoa, hey, that's a little uncalled for, man. Shut up, past Diego. Because you were too busy not doing your job, you completely overlooked the fact that the person who runs the channel with the complete dinosaur hunting playthrough actually provided all of the information he or she could find on this game through a Google Docs form that they linked in the description of their videos. Using this would have made our lives a whole lot easier if you had just done your job right the first time around, you dumbass. Hey man, I was tired, and it's unreasonable to think I could look through every inch of the internet just to find some information on an outdated game. Sounds like bitch excuses to me. Go in the corner and think about your life. Anyways, while past Diego is being publicly shamed, it should be noted that in a section in the Google Docs form, it features an interview with the director for development for Microsoft Japan given by a site called Homeland. They go through a lot of details about the game that we've already seen, but in terms of inspiration, they actually answer our question. Apparently, they actually based their game around the idea of Sir Conan Doyle's The Lost World, and on top of that, it's mentioned that a lot of research on real-life dinosaurs was conducted to base their in-game models as. And that's pretty much all that's provided on the Google Docs form in terms of the developer's inspiration behind the dinosaurs. In terms of all of the other information on this Google Docs forms, it's pretty minor compared to the other stuff that we're going to be talking about regarding this game, but it may make a return later in the video, who knows. It kind of depends on how bad past Diego fucked up. Are you gonna stop bullying me now? Until I find another mistake of yours, which is inevitable. Man, Diego's an asshole. <laughs> Lastly, there's the overall gameplay. Now, some of you have probably been looking at the gameplay I've provided as background footage as I ramble on about random shit, and you're probably thinking, this looks familiar. Looking into the research of this game, I saw a few people pointing out this game's similarities with that of Monster Hunter, a video game franchise that began in 2004, was developed and published by Capcom, and was originally released for the PS2. As you probably already guessed if you aren't familiar with this game, it revolves around a hunter who has to complete quests and missions which usually revolved around hunting and slaying monsters. And just by comparing the two games, you can see that there is a striking resemblance, and at first glance of this, people may be quick to call dinosaur hunting a monster hunter ripoff. And you may be right with that assumption. According to the Google Docs form, the very first release date for this game was actually in September of 2003 for Japan. So we now know that this game was released before Monster Hunter, meaning it's in the clear, right? Well, Monster Hunter was released in March of 2004 only six months after the very first release of Dinosaur Hunting. Now, it's hard to pinpoint when exactly the people at Capcom began the overall development of Monster Hunter, but I highly doubt it was within a six-month time frame. Some sources even say that it began all the way back in 2000, back when Capcom's production Studio One were tasked to develop three games specifically for the PS2, with Monster Hunter being one of them. And if you refer back to the Homeland interview with the director for development for Microsoft Japan, that very director mentions that dinosaur hunting had a two-year development period. So given that this development period took place right before the initial release date for dinosaur hunting in September of 2003, that would mean they began in 2001. So if those sources about Monster Hunter's development starting as early as 2000 holds true, there's still about a year left in there somewhere in which information and ideas around Monster Hunter could have possibly been taken for dinosaur hunting. And things only get weirder when you see who runs Metro 3D. Joe Morici and George Nakayama, names I'm pretty sure I butchered, are not only the head of Metro 3D, the very company that published Dinosaur Hunting, but are also ex-Capcom employees. And it doesn't help when you find out that this company was known for making cheap games with some of them being obvious rip-offs of popular titles. Is it possible that these two may have been around for the early development stages for Capcom's upcoming game revolved around hunting monsters and decided to take this idea upon their departure from that company to eventually use in their own newly created video game company to create what would eventually be dinosaur hunting? I mean, it's not impossible. But because there are so many holes and unknown parts to this story, it's not something that can have a definitive answer to it. 
So I'm not gonna give an opinion to this. Hey guys, President Diego here once again to fix past Diego's mistakes. Turns out he forgot to put in a pretty crucial piece of evidence that may discredit everything he just said. What an idiot. We are literally the same person. This is just as much your mistake as it is mine. Shut up, past Diego, you're still in the corner. Anyways, according to the Wikipedia page on Metro 3D, it states that it was not only founded in 1998, but Joe Marici and George Nakayama had been the head of the company as early as 1999. Meaning that they had left Capcom before they began the development of Monster Hunter, given these stories are correct about when it began its development. Also, I just want to take this time to correct myself on something. I mentioned that these two made the Metro 3D company for some reason, but it only states that they were running it, not that they founded it. I guess Paz Diego is just brain damaged or something, I don't know. But with this information, at first I thought, okay, that pretty much solves everything, right? But then I went into conspiracy theory mode, because the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it's possible these two could have had an inside man still working at Capcom to give them information on the Monster Hunter game to possibly use in dinosaur hunting. But then I realized that really Metro 3D is only known for publishing the game, so maybe they weren't even a part of the development process at all. The only reason why I suspected this in the first place was because of the lack of information on the scared developer and the fact that these two were ex-Capcom employees. To me, there's just something that doesn't feel right here. Regardless, the possibility of them not being a part of the development process of dinosaur hunting shouldn't be ignored. And please take into consideration that all of this is just speculation, and I'm not coming to the conclusion on anything here. The point of this video isn't to hurt anyone's name or brand. I simply just wanted to make a video on something that I found interesting and I'm providing whatever information I can find on this game and giving my own thoughts on it. Even though Pastiego clearly stated he wasn't going to give an opinion on this. Dude, you're the one giving the opinion. Anyways, just know that I'm fully aware that I could be completely wrong about everything here, but I figured I'd just mention it anyways just to speculate a bit further on it. And as always, if I'm incorrect about anything or missed anything, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. I know I've been talking as if I'm very suspicious of this game, but a part of me feels that while this game could have likely taken inspiration from the Monster Hunter series and even stolen ideas from it, it still feels like it has a unique aspect to it, and rather than being a full-on ripoff, if you want to call it that, it feels like a game that added its own twist to it by replacing the monsters with dinosaurs and creating something out of that. But that may just boil down to wishful thinking. Overall, I can't really come to a full-on opinion on the subject due to the lack of information. But going back to the game itself, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the kind of gameplay these kinds of games offer, just because it sometimes feels too linear for me. But after looking at the playthrough of it that I found on YouTube, it does look like it provides a healthy amount of exploration, which is something that I tend to look for in games. And a part of me has always been a little interested in the Monster Hunter series, but I haven't gone out of my way to really get into the game. But slap some dinosaurs on it, and I'm pretty much sold. And that's what many people considered this game to be, a monster hunter game but with dinosaurs. And despite some of the criticism that it's gotten, it seems that people see this game as an underrated gem, and just from doing some research on the game itself, I can see why. Overall, dinosaur hunting is something that I feel I would have loved to have tried out. Hell, even without the English edition, I'd be more than happy to check out something like this now. But it goes for high prices now since it's considered a rare and even sometimes lost game. I tried looking into the reasons why this game wasn't released into the US and I couldn't really find a solid reason at first. But then I came across the Wikipedia page for Metro 3D and it turns out the company became defunct in 2004. And it was mentioned that the game was delayed for a US release all the way until August of 2004, before ultimately being cancelled, indicating that the discontinuation of the company was the reason for this cancellation. While we won't be able to get a chance to play Dinosaur Hunting, there is an outlet in which we could watch it in its entirety, and that's through the playthrough series featured on a channel known as Sean S. I used various clips of this playthrough in my video, so if you want to watch more of it, check out the links for it in the description down below. Hopefully one day we'll get another game like Dinosaur Hunting, one that everyone will be able to obtain and play. But for now, it's just another obscure piece of gaming history. Hope you guys enjoyed that video. This one was uh, a little bit stressful to make just because the research process uh, was a little different this time around. It definitely took longer than my previous videos and it, there was constant double checking and going back to make sure I got some information right and didn't miss out on anything. And uh, you know, I do apologize for all of the incorrections and whatnot. I still feel like uh, there's something that I missed, but 
Uh, this this whole thing is a bit obscure, so I guess I, I shouldn't be surprised if there's something missing from this, so. But before we go, I do have a couple of announcements. The first one being I have a second channel now that will be linked in the description below. This channel kind of serves as an outlet to be able to do whatever I want to do without, I guess, worrying about being consistent with the quality or the type of content that I want to cover. The direction that this main channel is going in is one that I actually really like and I don't really want to change, but I miss doing the old random content I used to do, so that's what this channel is going to be. It's just going to be a bunch of random content on it, and most of it will be based around dinosaurs, but I'll probably add in some other random bullshit in there somewhere. I don't know. It's just, I'll do whatever I want in it. It's my channel. Second announcement, I am working on my first ever series in a while uh, here on the channel, and don't worry, it's not going to be a huge departure from the kind of stuff I already cover here on the channel, but it is going to be a little different, and it is very experimental just because I haven't really done something like this before on the channel. Uh, but, you know, it's nothing too big, it's nothing too exciting, but I think it's kind of a cool concept and idea, and I want to try it out here on the channel. So, uh, yeah, uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, I don't really expect it out uh, for at least a couple or a few weeks. I don't know. I'll get to it when I get to it. Stop brushing me. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for now. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and please... Have a nice day.